Sochi over the last fortnight. And welcome back, Anne Roy. You know, if last night was a low night with the corruption and the scandal concerning the skating, this is an impressive moment that we're about to embark on, or impressive project we're about to embark on. I really feel as though I should hand over to you at this oh, particular point. I'm, I'm a little bit teary at you. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a dream come true, a lifelong dream. It is, is it? it is, it is. And can I just say, I've been at arm's length from this, absolutely. Uh, a little and said, Winter Olympics, will you come here? <laughs> and that town is my old hometown in Lithgow. It's uh, Loco Wog, the <laughs> Lithgow organising committee of the Winter Olympic Games. Uh, now, a lot of people say, what's snow like in Lithgow, HG? Let's have a look at some images, and this takes me back to my childhood. This is what Lithgow looks like in winter. <laughs> Uh, there we are. That's uh, where some events will be taking place, of course. There's the little town itself, huddled there, snuggling in the snow as it does at this time of year. Well, in June and July. Moving on, here we are, the zigzag railway with the snow all over it. Still running, of course. Still pulls in the tourists. And one more, is there any more there? No, that'll do it. That, that, gives, you, that gives you a bit of an idea of what the little town looks like. Now, the organising committee, HG, is a very impressive That's set of dignitaries. Of it is a hell of a co committee. Let's have a look at them. We've got Jared Martin, who's the longest serving mayor of Lithgow. Jared's put his hand up, a very fine man. <laughs> Moving on to uh, the chairman, Lieutenant General Angus Campbell, DSC AM, <laughs> who's sorting out all the nonsense up north and uh, he won't uh, stand for any nonsense when it comes to the Lithgow bid. Uh, <laughs> moving on, we have, of course, Morris Newman, advisor to the government at the moment, to the Prime Minister's Department, who'll be dealing with logistics. <laughs> moving on to Susie O'Neill, Madam Butterfly, <laughs> representing the IOC in the matter. Moving along to uh, Jana Pittman, AOC, <laughs> who's uh, pencilled her name. They only said she'd uh, do it this morning, which we're all very proud of. Moving on to, of course, uh, Peter Credlin, <laughs> who's the media manager for, uh, I think, the Prime Minister's office. She'll handle all the media. Uh, with, with communications expertise coming from Andrew Bolt. <laughs> Uh, who'll be sorting out this thorny issue of uh, does water really freeze at naught degrees? <laughs> Andrew will get to the bottom of that, and Todd McKenney will be the ceremony's director. Now, this is not some Mickey Mouse Lennox head thing. This is real. Now, let's have a look at the venues. Here's uh, Lithgow coming up. Uh, here we are, here it is now, there's the little town, and looking at the vendor, you've got the Bowenfells Olympic Village there on the left. The Lithgow Cool Stores will be turning the ice dancing and speaking. <laughs> the Vale of Clwyd, uh, with its Welsh connections there, will be there for the half pipe. Moving on to the, uh, Scotsman's Hill Downhill, the Wallaby Rocks, Skeleton Illusion Bobsleigh, the Mount Tomar Cross Country Biathlon, that'll test anyone out. <laughs> Moving on to the opening ceremony at Tony Lachetti Field. Won't cost us much, that. The dog track will have to be converted into the ice sheet for curling. And the slope style, of course, happens at Oakey Park. And finally, I think we've got the ice cube at Mort's Estate. Now, that now. is excellent, Roy. And what is amazing about this is the whole town has agreed to do this. And this means when it comes to the budget, I mean, it's a breath of fresh air. $50 billion, billion dollars here, here in Sochi. Sochi. $50 billion. This is what we can do it for. Here's our budget. Uh, the dog track centre that I mentioned, it's going to cost $250,000 to, uh, to upgrade. Uh, everything else, it's only the bottom, the only line that's a little bit problematical is the IOC hospitality. We've only got a millionaire earmarked for that. Uh, we might have to drag down some of the 15000 from the contingency to go into that. But all in all, HG, a bid of $3.250 million. <laughs> Now, and the great thing, Roy, the great thing is the corporate support you've been able to round up this week here in Sochi, yeah. back in Australia. I know. Have a look. Yeah, I know. We've got Samsung on board. Obviously, Shidu is coming on. <laughs> on it. The AJ Bear for dealer. Uh, uh, AJ Bear, what a name oh, he was incredible. and what a force he was now downhill. And the BHP Bulletin, of course, Willerang Power Station and the 10 Network are right behind it. Now, people say to me, HG, is Lithgow capable of holding big events? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, what's been keeping Lithgow alive for years now is the world-famous Iron Fest at the Tony Lachetti Sports Ground. This gives you a bit of an idea. I mean, 
mean, sure, it looks a little small, but once we give that budget of, I think we've got $40,000 a year marked for the opening ceremony, I think it's just going to be wonderful. People say, this isn't Australia. Yes, it is. That's Lithgow. That's happening every year. It's just an incredible, and at times that by, say, 100,000 in the audience yes. and parking for cars, you I hope know. to get about 40,000 parked cars around the oval you would. with the headlights pointing in yeah. to save power and tonking when they want it. And it's an interesting thing. It's an absolute breathtaking. Yes. Breathtaking. It breathtaking. Be refreshing. To be able to watch an opening ceremony in your car. I know. That's right. <laughs> and these are what some... What could be more Australian? I know. I know. And these are some of the sports you'll be able to see there.